from the SA Survival. I just want to show you an issue that I came across with my solar panel on the back of the truck. Um, I had no output, which confused me because I have a digital uh, display from the SeaTech 140 off-road, which enables me to see my inputs and my outputs. It was showing me in full sunshine about a month ago that I had a zero charge going in, which confused me. I'm like, solar panel's good, the wiring's good, it was working perfectly fine, what is going on? I did some basic checks, and it led me to believe that the solar panel was good. Those basic checks were the output of the solar panel. This is a Coleman 100 watt solar panel, which generates 21 volts at around about five to six amps, depending on the sunshine. Now, obviously, this is a 12 volt circuit, so it has to be uh, monitored and checked, whether it's with a um, solar controller, pulse width modulated, or an MPPT controller. We have a MPPT controller here with the CTEC uh, D250SA. What were my voltages? So what I've done is I've gone to voltage, I've connected my ground to my ground, my positive to my positive, and you can see I have 21 volts coming out of the panel. This is disconnected. I'm going to reconnect it to the vehicle, to the D250, which it is now. And we are now going to try, if I can keep my fingers out of your focus. It says I have 12 volts but I have no solar light on and no battery charge light on. That is interesting because before I had six and a half volts. Problem was, it wasn't turning the LED light on for the D250. This is where I then contacted CTEC. I said, I think I've got a problem with the actual unit. So they give me some preliminary checks to check and they said that their unit is working perfectly fine of which then that's the nightmare. Is it a $200 solar panel or is it the wiring that you've traced all the way through the vehicle, through the body of the vehicle and secured so that it doesn't leak, which means, you know, over 20 foot of cable and there's a break in there. Let me go ahead and show you what the diagnosis was and how I went around finding the problem and then the fix. Follow me. Is joining us because she likes to sit in the truck. And the special thing about Bella today is the fact that it is her birthday and she is six years old. I apologize for the sound of this uh, segment, but my microphone obviously failed me. These are the LEDs that I'm talking to you about. This one here is the solar input. This is the one that comes from the panel. And this second one down here is the one that goes to the battery. So the first one is solar in, the second one is battery being charged by the solar panel. This is where I contacted CTEC. CTEC advised me to take my ignition wire, this wire here, and connect it via a jumper cable directly to the solar input of the D250SA, this terminal right here. After about 10 seconds, the LED for the solar input, this one right here, illuminated that meant that the internals had switched over and they were accepting the solar charge from the panel. This determined that there was nothing wrong with the D250SA. So now I had to go back and check the wiring from the solar panel, check the solar panel and all of the connections between everywhere and the D250SA. So starting off at the box, this connector here, this is from the solar panel directly and this is the positive and the negative, of which I'm going to show you in a moment what I was getting in voltage. This wire here is from the D250SA, and this is going through the box, and that's where my connector is. I designed this box so it could be a quick disconnect, so I could pull the box out if I needed to. So testing from here back to this connection was good with continuity. I know that's not the best test to do, but this is a quick test. I then from this connector all the way back to the solar panel 
I did a continuity check and it seemed to be all good. From there I then got a second solar panel which is my backup solar panel and I connected it to those wires in the back of the solar panel on the truck and checked all the way down to the cab. I was getting 19 volts. So from there, solar panel in, all the way down to the box, I was getting 19 volts. The problem was when I was measuring at the D250, with all the connections connected, I was only getting 6.5 volts. This was at the time that I tested it before. That is not a good sign, but I was thinking if the MPPT controller has been switched on, then maybe there is a little bit of a voltage drop. From there, I headed to the back of the truck and opened up the cover on the solar panel. This is the positive out to the D250. This is the negative in from the solar panel and out to the D250. But I also have this third post in the middle. Now, I'm not sure if you can see clearly here, but this post is quite nicely connected. But this post is melted. So this is where I think my problem lies. Right between the solar input to the positive side is this blocking diode. I believe that this blocking diode has failed. We're going to do some measurements to prove that this has failed. And if it does fail, it doesn't give you any charge because the solar input does not reach the output of the panel going to the input wire all the way to the D250SA. This specific diode is a 10A10, which means 10 amp, 1000 volts for my panel. I'm using green for ground and blue for positive. I'm hoping you can see the display. So if we go onto ohms and we press on here, You can see it fluctuating here, and I'm only pressing on it. And if I go on the actual terminals, I get a better wire. But it's all over the place. Now, if I switch it around, we should have zero flow, which is what we have. Now let's check a good diode. We just touch. We get constant 1.6 mega ohms. If we check the other way, we get nothing. Now, let's check a diode test. Let's go to the old one. No flow. No flow. No. Oh, now we have flow. 1.2 volts. 0.5 of a volt and that's on the wires an open circuit right now Point 0.8 of a volt still do not trust this thing let's try this one the new one half a volt zero volts. This brand new one is going to fix the problem, I'm hoping. But I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like it heated up and there's a crack right inside of here. So we're going to replace this. I'm not sure if you can see that. The light has gone off, flashing on. The battery is going on. And it goes off again so yeah this is definitely even though the light was staying on a minute ago we had 12 volts I did have to use my other hands <laughs> the two that I'm using to hold the camera and to balance myself I couldn't hold the probes on the positive and negative right here and here but I was getting uh, 12 volts with the lights on and 12 volts when the lights went off so the solar was coming in but it's just not triggering 
the D250 and this is what CTEC was saying. There's a problem with the wiring or the panel which leads me to that diode. See how it keeps flashing? And it is a sunny day and the panel is in the sunlight. So you can imagine the joy that I experienced when I realized that it was only a $1.40 diode. Everything else is still working. I'm super happy as I was previously confident with my uh, layout of my system but then everybody throws their 10 cents in you know did the solar panel was it flexed under the roof was the wiring compromised due to the weather over the winter has it stretched has it contracted and has it cracked inside no it has not it's a diode so going on to YouTube and Google after that to see if anybody else has had problems there's tons of problems with diodes so please if you have a problem I'm not saying the diode is the problem but it could be a simple fix just to do a quick test and see if it's faulty so now we're going to repair this diode I use two pieces of wood to stop the inductance of the heat going through the vise. Looks like it has been soldered all the way through. And now to test it. We're on diode check. Nothing going that way. Half a volt going through that way, and just want to make sure we don't have anything weird going on the other side. Same, same, so that's a good connection. And now, if we change it to resistance, one mega ohm. Same, so there's nothing really varying there. Change it around, open, open. 
that is going to fix the problem. Let's go and install it and see what happens at the uh, solar panel and the D250SA. see what voltage we get positive and negative uh, fluctuating between 14 and 19 volts it's because the Sun went in As you can see as it rises and the Sun comes out of the cloud Let's get rid of that. and 19 volts every now and then Nothing there, that's because I'm going from the positive side of the diode and the solar panel to the positive cable going to the D250, positive and ground. Yeah. So the solar panel is working there. With Bella in full screen, hopefully now you can see we have two LEDs, one from the solar panel and one to the battery. The connections are good. At my connector, we are going to see, oh, turn this off and press the button, turn that on, hopefully now we will see what we have going on, so we have 19 volts going in. And the D250 has an MPPT controller going into that. So that's going to rectify the uh, 19 volts down to 12 volts. And it will also take the un or the wasted voltage and convert that into amperage. And that will work on the uh, MPPT, charge the AGM battery that's down here, and hopefully keep everything charged up for when we travel. Well, thanks for watching that solar repair, and I'm hoping that this is going to help you out if uh, you have a problem with the solar panel, and you've got a rig similar to what we have here with a DC-DC converter that can take solar input. Like I said, we're trying to rectify every problem that we may come across right now for our Alaska trip 2019 that starts off in July. So, thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget, with your diode check what diode you have depending on what system you are using mine was a 10 a uh, 10 which is a 10 amp uh, thousand volt uh, diode again i hope this was uh, helpful to you and it keeps you traveling survive to be alive mm -hmm.